While you're working out, you might be a little bit worried about your diet. Worry no longer. We have Dr. Joey Schulman here to uh, guide us a little bit. You know the beginning of the year is huge for weight loss, right? But Seriously. there isn't any reason why we can't start now. Don't wait till Monday. Don't wait till tomorrow. Start at your next meal. Right. There are things that we collectively often do right and things that we collectively often do wrong. Yes. So we want to talk about the main tips for weight loss yes. that can work or sabotage. Absolutely. So let's start with the wrong first. Yeah. So the wrong is when people focus on the white carbs versus the green carbs. Mm -hmm. So we want to get, I'm telling you guys, the white carbs and the white sugar, it's a massive problem in our diet these days. A massive problem. So I want you to fill up on as much green as you possibly can. It's nutrient dense, it's low in calories, it's alkaline. You can have a little whole grains, but try and get all of the white grainy foods right. out of your diet. It's going to bounce blood sugar. You know that 3 p.m. slump where you think, oh, I need a nap before my next meeting. Yeah. That actually shouldn't happen. If you're eating right, you shouldn't get that 3 p.m. slump. The 3 p.m. slump is what did I have for lunch that's making me tired slump. Right. So we want to avoid that. And the more you eat of this, the more you'll want of it. Because what yes. I find is when I get off track, it's very hard to get back on because I've been eating the white stuff and then I want more of the white stuff. Right. Your and body wants it, I guess, to keep your blood sugar up. You're craving. And yeah. when you're craving, there's a difference between I want a cookie versus I'm going to kill someone for a cookie. Right. You don't want to be in the I'm going to kill somebody for a cookie. Yeah, 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 and yeah. you can get snackable green fruits like nori these days. I, I literally pop these and I eat them in the car like chips and yeah. they're great. Try and fool your kids into that at a young age. Yes. Right? Because yes. the, the, the sooner you do it, you know, you want that kid going to grade six saying, hey guys, I brought chips, and that's their chips. Right. Like you want that kid. Right. right? You want that kid. You I don't have that, that kid, kid unfortunately, no, but, do I. Yeah. Okay. but so we I can pretend we did. Earlier. So this, Tracy, what do you think that is? Sugar? And what do you think that represents? Any guesses? Uh, oh. Half a cup. That is a can of pop. Ooh. Okay, so ooh, big gas from the audience here. That is a can of pop. So we're going to be talking a lot about Yikes. white sugar this year. Because, yes, there's going to be a little white sugar in your diet or sugar, but there's so many good alternatives out there. And people are sugar confused. Yeah. And sugar is causing type 2 diabetes. It's been linked to cancer. It's been linked to heart disease, obesity, fat storage around the tummy area. Yeah. You can have sweets, but we're going to be talking lots, and I'm going to be blogging about natural alternatives. Oh, that's a great idea. And I hope you talk about sugar substitutes as well, because what if people are thinking, well, I moved from Coke to Diet Coke. Aren't I okay now? Right. So we're going to talk about sugar alcohols and aspartame. So just check the City Line website. I'm going to be blogging about all of that. Good stuff. The third thing is please don't skip breakfast. Have a healthy breakfast. If you skip breakfast, you're going to gain more weight. And I want you to eat breakfast like a king and lunch like a prince and dinner like a pauper. Right. Five times a week. That's the way that everybody will lose weight. So okay. just lighten up at dinner time. How much are we be talking about when we eat like a king? <laughs> I just you, do you want me to I, I just want an outline. Like can you do calories? turkey bacon and eggs and a bowl of cereal? Honestly? Yes. Okay. I eat massive breakfast. Yeah. And after breakfast I start doing this. Okay. Yeah. I like now, that. The other thing is, so those are the don'ts. So don't skip mm -hmm. meals and don't have the white sugar and the refined flours. So what are the do's? The do's are A, to stay hydrated. I can't say it enough. Your urine should be clear. So when you go to the bathroom, your urine should be clear. All the time? Drink water, all the time. Okay. Drink water, drink water, drink water. Mm -hmm. The second is make sure you have proteins, like a fabulous protein powder. I know you love this one. Mm -hmm. Whether it's chicken or salmon or tofu or tuna. And have fats. Why? They're the break. So if I give you a piece of white bread and you go, okay, I'm going to eat that, Joey, your blood sugar goes, and I say, no, 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 I want to break on your blood sugar. I throw an avocado in. I throw some protein in. That's the break. It brings down your blood sugar. Okay. I don't want to take carbs away completely. I want them to enter your system slowly. That is the key to weight loss right there. It's not a mathematical thing. It's not calories in, calories out. Right. So you're adding the fat to the whole grain or you're just doing the fat? Either or. If you want to have or. whole grains, have whole grains. You'll still lose weight. Make sure you, you slap some fat or some protein on there because it slows the entry into the bloodstream. Good point. Okay. The last thing for weight loss is get a buddy. And, you know, when, when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people or we're doing it on, at City Line, the research shows that if you're working with a buddy or in a group, yeah. your results will be much higher. Not only will you lose weight better, you'll sustain your weight loss results better. So mm -hmm. get a buddy. That's all you have to do. Have a friend, have a group, have a community for weight loss. Someone who's going to hold you accountable. It's Absolutely. just some, sometimes having that extra boost that, you know, someone else 
did some, did something good or ate something well, and right. you feel like you want to do it too. Check You're both in, with in it together. Absolutely, it's good accountability. We have had amazing results with the City Line Weight Loss Challenge, and I mean seriously, Joey, you're you're changing lives all over the place. So I think it is. It's been incredible. We've had a lot of tears. We've had a lot of incredible uh, victories happen right here in our studio. Yeah. So the City Line Weight Loss Challenge 2014 wants you. Last year, our City Line Weight Loss Challenge was one of our most successful yet. Our winners lost 97 pounds collectively. Mm -hmm. That's them uh, yeah. looking absolutely amazing. Of course, you can clap. Go ahead. Yeah. Changing for these women. So, if you uh, if you want to lose some weight, we want to hear from you. If you want to apply, go to our website that is cityline.ca/slash/weight-loss-challenge. Send in your stories because that's what they did last time, right? They sent in their stories. You poured through all of them, oh. as did our you know lovely. We were boohooing in the green. I mean, yeah. it was so amazing. The stories were fabulous. Yeah. So I mean, great job. Thank you. Good for you. Let's go to break. More coming up. Yeah. That is Let's go chat with Dr. Joey now. So uh, I mentioned we well, we saw the, the meal there. It's hilarious. Very everyone's, quick. On, everyone's on their best nutritional behavior when I'm here. Yeah, the no you, sugar. I'm not judging, Sandy. We're You're good. You're like yeah. the police I'm when you come you. here. So you know, let's talk about unwinding and relaxing. So let's say you've done all that entertaining, right. and now you want to chill out for a little bit. Whether your guests are there, you've all they've all left. You want to unwind. Sometimes yes. people find it hard to do that. Yes, and we are a nation that is chronically sleep deprived yeah, and it is terrible. a big deal it's, it raises cortisol levels you don't lose weight as well you don't feel as refreshed and alive you're mean you're mean, you're a little bit mean, we're a little bit mean. Yes, so, when I don't have sleep, I, have I don't even want to be, I don't even want to know me. Right, exactly. When I've had no grumpy. sleep. Yeah. So um, what we want to do is we want to make your bedtime as routine as possible. Okay. So uh, for those who are watching TV, for those who PVR'd City Line, fabulous. Watch it in the TV room and then save the bedroom, no TV, no iPhones. But make it a routine. So I want you to make a cup of tea every night while you're, wi you need to wind yourself down because we wind ourselves up all day long. Yes. And so whether you're having, I mean, sleepy time tea is one of our very favorites. And now there's an, a sleepy time that has valerian root in it. And valerian root is this fabulous herb mm -hmm. that helps you go to sleep. But the nice thing about the sleepy time is you don't feel a hangover effect the next day. You don't feel that woozy, sort of exactly. foggy, you can't get out of it feeling. Exactly. So I want you to slowly start to bring yourself down before bed. Okay. Now I want you to stay asleep too. That's a big deal. Once you go to sleep, I don't want you up two to three times a night. Yeah. Some some people also do very well with calm magnesium. Mm -hmm. So they mix it in their water too. You have your cup of tea, you have some magnesium. That will keep you rested throughout the night and that will keep you asleep. I want you asleep between 2 and 4 a.m. It should be, you should be sleeping in complete darkness. Mm -hmm. That's when you secrete melatonin. That hormone is a big deal. So you want okay. to secrete melatonin to feel rested, yeah. to make sure you have a powerful anti-cancer in your body, to lose weight. Yes. And if you're if you're the lights are coming in or if you're checking your iPhone, it's not gonna happen. So between two and four AM, that's when you secrete melatonin? Yes. And, and why is, does it happen then? Is that just a biological thing or does it have to do with the lack of light? It's a biological thing and the lack of light. So okay. it's from the pineal gland. You won't secrete it, even if your alarm clock is, is facing you. Really? Turn it away. Some people sleep with a sleep mask. I can't. I find them very claustrophobic. Phobic, yeah. So my room is completely dark. Good. The next okay, thing is I didn't you, realize how important that was. It's so important, Tracy. Mm -hmm. The next thing is you can put some lavender on your pillow if you're okay with lavender scent. Yes. Uh, I find it very relaxing. We bathe the kids in it. You sprinkle it over your pillow. It'll take you down a little bit as well. Oh, that's so nice. So the more I can wind you down at bedtime, the better. Okay, very good. So no, I no don't bring the uh, don't bring the computer in the bedroom. That's oh, going to be a tough one it for a lot of a people. Tough one. Or it having a TV in the in the bedroom. Do you have a TV in your bedroom? I you do. You can tell me. No, no, I do. Okay. Well, don't, don't tell anybody. Okay? <laughs> yeah, don't tell, don't them, tell anybody. But you can tell me. I do, but I have to make. I I love watching TV in the bedroom. I have to make a conscious effort in the TV room. Have my tea. Right. Don't turn it on during at nighttime. Okay, no, but I you do. can watch it in the daytime. I do. We did, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. We yeah. don't have a TV in our room. We're so, we're like pioneers. You don't at have my a TV house. in your bedroom. We have one TV in our entire house. Good for you. It is in the basement, and you know, unless we're I'm pioneers. watching PVR City Lines, I'm not watching TV. That That's is about fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah, we're like in the ancient to the Stone Ages in my house. You know what? The more you can keep your kids, because your kids are little, doing that, the yeah. better. Yeah. I applaud that. That's amazing. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And that's just us being cheap. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's go to break. We've got more coming up.
we were talking about birth order, which yes. is a topic I never get tired of talking about, but we forgot only children. Yes. So what are the characteristics of an only child? What do parents need to uh, think about with their only children? So with only, ch only children, they tend to mirror the same gendered parent. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so if you have a daughter, she'll tend to really uh, follow after the mother. Right. If the mother herself was a middle child, she'll probably have more attributes of the of a middle child because she's modeling after her mm -hmm. mother. Does that kind of make sense? That makes yeah. sense. Okay. So they tend to be almost like little adults. Yeah. They tend to grow up a lot faster. Mm -hmm. um, things that they crave is relationships. They right. really, really crave relationships, crave friendships. The things that uh, sometimes they have to struggle with a little bit is in terms of learning to share. Right. And not being so self-centered. Right. Yeah. So from a parenting perspective, if you've got an only child, you want to make sure you're very intentional about doing lots of play dates, making sure that they're actually uh, developing those social skills and really be intentional about not, uh, you know, basically uh, creating your whole life around that child. Mm hmm Because they it, have to make their own friends. Yes. And they've got to learn all of those things that yes. we are supposed to know how to do in the workplace. Right. In those formative years right and so you got to give them the opportunity yes. to do that yes. it's all about the play dates these days anyway it, so it used to be it used to be that it was just playing with whoever was around <laughs> I remember now the first... it's like my kids social calendar is ridiculous <laughs> I, yeah. I barely have time to organize their dates I remember the first time one of my girlfriends like well do you want to do a play date I'm like a what like I honestly I was <laughs> just like come over. don't you just come over like yeah, when do we no, give it a name anymore, right? not anymore but now, but now I'm in it like it's like play date yeah. like social and I actually really like it I like the, oh, I I like like the connection too. with the moms. Yes. But it's also nice to right. have neighbors that they're friends with so yes. that they can run they can out of the play. house and just ring on a doorbell like yes. they did in yes. our yeah. era yes. and say, yeah. can Tracy come out to play? Because right. that's what we used to do, <laughs> yes. right? And then you go out to play and you come home when you come home. Yeah. Yes. So let's talk about you guys, where you, where you fit on the uh, on the birth order. Do you know what, what she is? Joey, what are you? Well, do you know what I, she is? I wouldn't... I, I'm, I'm always going to say kind of with most of the guest experts on the show, I'm going to always say that game. you're eldest I children know. because you all seem so responsible. Oh, and yeah. all of you are, well, everyone but Marilyn you. Smith Tracy. and tell Marilyn I said that. <laughs> tell Marilyn I said that. No, you all seem very baby. responsible yeah. and you all yeah. have your own businesses going on and we all know eldest children are very, uh, you know, assertive and right. they thrive, but you're a baby. But I'm a baby. I'm Were a you baby. a typical yeah. baby in your, in, in you your, know, by your... I am a typical baby. The only thing that I have that may be of the, the baby genre Genre is yeah. I have zero sense of direction. Like the fact that oh, I've made it to the neither. show today is is a miracle. <laughs> really? My dad would say if you spun her around twice, you'd never see her again. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe that's because I was always Somebody was taken like, care of. Oh. Like zero sense of direction. So maybe that's a baby trait. Yeah. That's interesting. interesting. Okay, what about you, Sandy? I'm one of the middle children. You're yeah. middle. My brother and I, yeah, so five siblings, um, so six kids in total. We are smack dab in the middle. My brother and I are the closest. Yeah. Uh, so we're kind we of the buddies. Yeah. We're the buddies. Mm -hmm. And what I found really interesting about what you said, and of course being a mom of seven kids, mm -hmm. I see the same mm -hmm. patterns, some mm -hmm. of the things that you said. Um, Don and I are all for, like, we are the human rights people. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. we, peace. Peace Good, and yeah. fairness I, mm -hmm. and yes, justice, fair. and I can like yeah. I'm the person who will yeah. stop on a street if I see somebody a kid being pounded it's, on or something. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. can't take it. Yeah. It's yeah. like it actually hurts my body. Mm -hmm. So I'm really uh, it, and my mm -hmm. brother is very very similar. Mm -hmm. We're the peacemakers, and I see that in my children, my it's, middle children. And so the thing that's for, interesting. The thing for middle children, very like they're very into the peace. So from a from a, a relationship perspective, the thing that a lot of times they don't like is conflict. So when I do, for example, marriage counseling, and I've got yeah. uh, spouses that are middle, that's the one thing that they have they have shied away from. They don't like conflict, mm -hmm. and realizing actually teaching that conflict is actually a good thing. Right, and yeah, conflict can be okay. So yeah. let's yeah, talk look at her. Look at her. Yeah. But it's true. It's like yeah. that. You, the you aha can... moment is. <laughs> Get it over with now. Yeah, right. I do. But we yes. want to argue. Yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. Such a bad that's exciting. Yeah. Right. So happy. when it comes to marriage, then you say <laughs> eldest children, um, firstborns are a better match with a middle or a youngest. You don't want necessarily two want two firstborns born together. Two, uh, they tend not saying that it can't work. I don't yeah. want anybody who's yeah. babies. Yeah. Anybody who's watching, if you're, too, I don't want you to divorce <laughs> your husband or your wife. Think you married the wrong person. <laughs> it's just that they tend to butt heads a little bit. Right. right. Okay. Both, yeah. So, they both have strong yeah, personalities. So, Baby goes really well with a firstborn because they like to be taken care of. I'm the baby, Brent's a middle, but he's got a lot of attributes of an L, so that's a good match. Okay. Middle yeah. children, uh, yeah. best match with firstborn or baby, yeah. as you say. And then only children, best match eldest, middle, or youngest. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky if they marry another person who's also an only. I've seen it happen, and mm -hmm. I've seen it work, but mm -hmm. it's just that they're both, um, it just complements each 
it, it, themselves a little bit more when they're actually with one of the other three. And then, of course, there are the people at home that are thinking, okay, I am an eldest and I have none of these attributes. All right. of this is based on what? Like, where does this stuff come well, from? Well, it's all based on research. This is okay. all this is all research based, but it's um, it has a lot to do with parents. So, you know, like when, when I'm talking about like being a baby, you know, okay, so a lot of babies may not be responsible, but it has a lot to do with the parents. Yeah. So my parents were really big into teaching responsibility, which is why I don't think I struggle with responsibility, but I right. do have a lot of the other attributes mm -hmm. of, a, of a typical baby. So it has a lot to do with parents and with what they've done um, in terms of raising their kids. That's why I think generalizations can be helpful, but they can yeah. be harmful. Mm -hmm. You really have to filter through your own experience. Now, other than you have bad direction, you're a big peacemaker. Yeah. I'm pretty much everything on the baby list. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Yeah. What in what way are you a baby? I'm a, a baby because I love being taken care of. You do? Yeah. Right? See, I, I do. I, I, and it's a side of me people don't really, way. I know, and oh, most wow. people wouldn't. Yeah. When, when Brent and I were doing premarital counseling, she, she was doing birth order. That's actually, she's like, it's Brent, it's very important that you understand that Karen wants to be taken care of. That's right. the baby in her. Oh, and that's cute. Yeah. That's nice. And it I is nice. Yeah. Guessed, yeah. I wouldn't have guessed that either. In a million. Thanks, yeah. ladies. And thank you for watching. We'll see you tomorrow on City Life. Have a great day.